Hey, it's Dry Bear. Now we just posted our Nightmare 80 Plus Summoner build, the Dark Emperor, and there were some very honest comments on that video focusing on the very concept that Diablo 4 is struggling with right now. Which is while that build uses minions, technically the damage is all coming from the unique Ring of Mendeln, and the damage is sourced from the Necromancer. It's not the minions doing the damage, which is totally fair, and it is not really truly in the sense of Summoner. So the challenge was afoot to see if I could create a build that does not use Mendeln and does not have any damage technically coming from me, that the only thing that's dealing the majority of my damage is the minions to see how far I could push it. And to my surprise, I was already pushing past Nightmare 80 with this pure summoner minion damage only no men down build. So if you're out there and you're unlucky and you haven't gotten the ring of men down yet, or you just want to be able to play with minions, we got it to work, we did it. So today I'm gonna walk you through my updated Undead Lord Necromancer end game build with no men down focused entirely on minion damage. The gameplay for this is gonna be around you buffing and supporting your minions and letting your minions tear down targets. And it is end game approved for Nightmare 80 and above. But first, you should come by my live stream. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. If you don't come by my live stream, the next time you're going downstairs, you're gonna miscount the number of stairs and you're gonna get to the bottom and think there's no stair and do that awkward step where you step like there's a, a lower elevation below you, but there isn't. Your foot hits it early and you look really weird. Okay, so we were able to do comfortably 75 to 80 and I was towards the end of my testing pushing 83 to 86 with this build specifically. And it's important to note that I am not wearing the Ring of Mendeln. You do not need it for this build. And I am not also not using any damage for myself. The majority of my gameplay revolves around maintaining Decrepify, maintaining Army of the Dead, maintaining the raised skeleton buff for my minions, maintaining Hellpent Commander for my minions, maintaining all my glyph damage bonuses for my minions, maintaining Blight for the minion damage bonus and disobedience, maintaining vulnerability for my minions, and so on and so forth. So all I'm doing is making my minions stronger. I'm not doing any of the damage. This is all entirely the minions. And when I started making this build, I was actually not encouraged by it. I tried doing mages as the main source of damage. It wasn't good enough. They didn't scale past Nightmare 50 on their own. I tried full cold damage with Frostburn, uh, and as well as using the Coldbringer aspect, which is Blizzard, it wasn't enough. I tried focusing entirely on Reapers or Skirmishers, it wasn't enough, I couldn't scale it up. However, we did a lot of clever changes, reorienting, and I did a bunch of imprinting. I basically burned through all of the aspects in my stash related to minions, but we finally got it to work. And this is the Undead Lord Necromancer. So the conclusion from that testing, for anyone who's curious, is that minions desperately need percent damage scaling, and they do not need attack speed as much. We are running Kalan's Edict here for the extra attack speed. We have Unyielding Commander as well as Frenzy Dead, but they desperately need damage scaling to do more and more damage. That's where Hellbent Commander comes in, which gives damage to your minions when you're standing close to them. We also run Inner Calm on this build, which when you push with Inner Calm, it's dangerous to stand still at any level of High Nightmare because you, could, you risk dying. So there's kind of like this strategy about finding where you can post up and build up the inner calm um, because it gives you damage when you stand still and your minions get 100% of that damage. So inner calm is our way to scale minions. We want to stand in a way where we're protected, kind of like a, a blockade of our minions from projectiles and melee. You'll see in the gameplay, I kind of post up and find safe spots to stand where the minions are standing between me and the enemy. And then I stand still to build up that inner calm give them bonus damage, and then I spend all of my time just buffing, rezzing, healing, and playing the true summoner playstyle that I think people have been looking for. Now, down below in the description and in the comments, I have my one sheet for this build, which goes through all the stat um, priorities here, all of the legendaries look at. You can see there's no men down in this build. It's just focused on dealing damage with the minions. And this is super tight. You really want these stats exactly as they are listed because it's, it's very narrow in order to get this. One of the most important ones is Lucky Chance to Heal. We want Vulnerable Damage because minions get 100% of that. We want Hellbent Commander on the Amulet. We want tons and tons and tons of damage reduction if we're going to be pushing High Nightmare. And then Cooldown Reduction so we can have high uptime on our Army of the Dead. On the bottom right of this one sheet, I have the Rotation and Priority. There's not really a major rotation for this. The general idea is that you have like 8 to 10 buffs 
and uh, specific conditions you have to maintain. You're basically playing a middle manager for your undead army. You're making sure everyone's working, they have all their buffs, they have all their resources, and you're just running around cleaning up and doing things like that. Uh, so you want to maintain vulnerable. We alternate between Corpse Tendril and Iron Golem Slam to get vulnerable. And as long as you time it properly, you can get full up time on vulnerable. We want the raised skeleton buff for all minions. We want flesh eater after consuming five corpses. We want the bonus of damage from uh, consuming a corpse, which gives us damage. We want army of the dead. We want to have disobedience stacked up with blight so we don't die to random things. We want decrepify so we have damage reduction and also so we get damage from slowed and also so we're lowering our cooldowns. We want blight minion damage bonus. We want to fully stack in our calm when possible. And we want to stand near our minions to give them Hellbent Commander whenever possible as well. I also have the full build built out on d4builds.gg with Paragon gear, stats, skill tree, and everything in between. So if you're looking for that, they'll be down there as well. And they recently added in a stat priority sheet for their website, which is awesome. And so I went ahead and filled that out as well. So you have the one sheet, you have this build, you have all the information that you need to run the undead, undead Lord endgame build. Let's jump right into it. We'll start with the, kill, the skill tree. We'll go through the gear, the stats, and the, uh, the legendary aspects, and then the uh, Book of the Dead, and then we'll go into Paragon, and then we'll talk about gameplay tips and tricks, things that you need to know. There's actually some very specific techniques to using this build that you need to learn how to play. It plays very differently than any other damage build. Where you stand, how you react to enemies, how you bring them around your, uh, your minions is very important. And I'll give you some tips and tricks at the end of the video on how to deal with things like suppressor, how to get your minions to stand where you want, that sort of thing. Let's start with the skill build. So again, all of this is focused on dealing damage with minions. We don't care about anything else in this build specifically. We're going to spend two points in basic because we have to. There's no way to get out of this tree without spending it. We have uh, decompose here. For anyone's wondering, I did try acolytes decompose even with the rotting aspect that makes it split. It just couldn't fit into the build. There were other priorities to fit into it. The 10% just wasn't worth it. Uh, we needed to have it. Now, you could run Decompose. Um, you can slot out a Golem here or maybe Corpse Tendrils, but the skill slots here are very tight. Keep in mind that we are running the Cult Leader Legendary Node for Paragon, which means that for every uh, minion type, all minions gain 15% damage. So when you pull Golem out of this build, your skeletons will get weaker for having done that. So keep that in mind, that's why we pulled it out. But if you do want to run Decompose, you can run it with the Rotting Aspect, and you can also run the Aspect of Might to get damage reduction after using a basic skill as well. We come down here, we pick up Blight, and this is just uh, for two reasons. Blight gives us two main, well, three main benefits. The first one is going to be Supernatural bite. Blight. When Blight is on the ground, minions dealing damage to the target standing in the Blight get a 15x percent multiplier on their damage. This is very important to helping them deal damage. The second thing is Blight is one of our only ways to stack up Disobedience, which is our defensive option for keeping us alive. You need to have this uh, Disobedience. It's one of the, it's the best defensive legendary in the entire game, but you need to be able to hit often to utilize it, which means you need to be sending out a couple Blights every couple seconds so that you're stacking up Disobedience so that you don't die, because obviously while you are a Summoner Necromancer, if you're dead, your minions are dead. And that is big sad. So we don't like that. So we use Blight to stack up Disobedience. And the third thing that we use Blight for is going to be for giving uh, the Scourge damage to our minions. You and your minions deal 10% X increased damage to enemies affected by Shadow Damage over time. Blight does trigger this, so we like that. That's what it's for. It's really just for dealing that. Uh, our minions are the star of the show here. We need Huge Flesh because we need a lot of corpses to be able to constantly be healing our minions and buffing them. We need lots of them. We get one point in Spiked Armor because... Minion Thorns triggers Lucky Hit, which means that the Lucky Hit bonus of Abort and Decrepify is triggered by Minion Thorns. So we want at least one point in Spiked Armor, so we have a non-zero amount of Thorns, so we're getting extra Lucky Hits as our minions get whacked on. All of your minions inherit 30% uh, of your Thorns, including your Mages, and as soon as you have so many minions, they're, they're getting hit by Thorns. It has a relatively low proc chance, but it is proccing as your minions are taking damage all the time. If you're running with a variant of this build, like you're pushing like high, high Nightmare, like 85 plus, you will want to run a shield with hardened bones on it. And if you do that and you have thorns in the shield, which you always will, you can swap uh, that point out for something else if you'd like. We need the HP and damage for our warriors. We want to generate essence um, from consuming corpses. We don't have a lot of essence gen in this build because we don't spend a lot of essence in this build, but this is still useful to keep us up. More blights means more disobedience means more buffs. It's very, very good. Then we got the damage from Field from Death as well. 
We're going to come into the curse tree and we're going to get all of the passives here. First off, we're going to get the Crepify. This gives damage reduction and slowing on targets that get hit by it. It also allows us to reset the cooldowns for our ultimates, primarily the cooldown on our Golem AoE vulnerable damage, our Army of the Dead, and then of course our Corpse Tendrils. If we have low enough cooldowns on Corpse Tendril and Golem, we can swap back and forth and we can have full uptime on vulnerability, which is super needed. We're also going to pick up the HP and damage for Skeletal Mages, and then we're going to get close damage, close damage reduction, and distant damage. Remember, you have ranged minions and you have melee minions. Your minions get 30% of your distant damage and close damage. So this uh, Death's Embrace will make uh, will increase the damage of your Reapers and your Golem. And dis uh, Death's Reach will increase the damage of your Mages. It's useful. Trust me, it works. Put it in there. We're going to come down and get Corpse Tendril. This allows us to group enemies up. All our Reapers do melee cleave and our Mages do blizzard storms. The more clumped enemies are, the more damage we do, the faster we clear the mobs. It also allows us to do one Decrepify and get everyone and get lots of good value out of that. And it also means that our Golem can AoE Vulnerable very easily. And we're going to pick up the Vulnerable for Corpse Tendril to make sure that works. We also want to get Necrotic Carapace. Since we're running with Reapers that spawn corpses and we give them tons of attack speed, they spawn corpses like crazy. This is a very easy source to get lots of Fortify for us. We're going to come down here and we're going to pick up the Golem HP and the Golem damage. We also want Army of the Dead, which gives us a very easy way to proc Lucky Hit, as well as deal damage and spawn corpses. But the number one thing that we want from Army of the Dead is when Army of the Dead is active, it's constantly resing your Skeletal Warriors and Skeletal Mages. I have learned through tons of testing that after about Nightmare 75, it becomes almost impossible to keep your minions alive permanently. And I've tried Shielding Storm, Bone Storm, insane amounts of minion damage reduction, insane amounts of minion healing, and it just isn't enough. If you find a, a Fire Enchanted Elite uh, Nightmare 80 plus, they're going to die. And so the only way I've been able to push past 80 with a minion build is with Army of the Dead, because as long as you have a near full uptime on Army of the Dead with low cooldown reduction, it doesn't matter if they're dying, you're replenishing them infinitely and you're constantly getting them back in the battle, and it makes it a lot more viable. Then we're going to pick up Inspiring Leader. This gives uh, attack speed to your minions. Hellbent Commander gives damage to your minions when you're standing next to them. By the way, if you ever want to test this out uh, on your minions, they will have a, a, a nice little blue glow on their hands when they're in range of Hellbent Commander. Um, very easy to see. Just kind of stand in your minions. They'll, their hands will glow. And then if you step away, they'll stop glowing. That glow of, on their hands is Hellbent Commander. Just so I'm not leaving anyone behind, you see the glow on my minions? You see how the mages right now do not have glowing hands, but the Reapers do? And if I step in range of the mages, whoop, their hands glow. That means they're benefiting from Hellbent Commander. So as you play, you'll get used to standing next to them. You see how they pop in and out. Their hands glow, stop glowing, start glowing, stop glowing. It's a very easy visual to understand when that damage is there. And keep in mind that I don't even have Hellbent Commander on my amulet. You can get this up to 50% bonus damage from your amulet uh, just by increasing this. This gives insane damage. So you combine, so if you can proc inner calm, stand in your minions and stand still, you can get, you can make them do crazy damage. It works really, really well. We also want bonded in essence to uh, heal your minions every five seconds. This is why we are spamming our uh, raised skeleton. One of the reasons why we're doing it to keep them alive. And then of course we want death's defense. Minions cannot lose more than 30% of their max HP in a single hit. They will still die to AoE, but it's harder for them to die to single target. And the thing that people have been waiting for and asking for, we are using a build that takes full advantage of Kalan's Edict. This one is super strong if you can maintain it. It is hard to maintain, and we're going to do some things to maintain it, but I wanted to make sure I did a build for this that used it because I know a lot of summoners out there were wondering, well, everyone's just using Shadow Blight or they're just doing damage with Bone or they're just doing overpower damage with Death Speaker, but they're not actually doing minions. We have a build that is actually doing minion. Let's quickly look at the Book of the Dead because I always forget to do this and people ask in the comments. We're going to do Skeletal Warriors, Reapers, and then the chance to spawn Corpse. With high attack speed on the minions through Army of the Dead, Frenzied Dead, and the passive uh, attack speed from our skill tree, they attack so fast that you'll have a graveyard of corpses. This allows you to get damage reduction, allows you to stack up Flesh Eater, as well as give you bonus damage from the buff as well, and heal your minions too. We're going to pick up Skeletal Mages, and you have two choices here. I actually prefer each time your Cold Mages damage enemies with their primary attack, you gain Essence. The other option is that when you hit enemies that are frozen, you apply Vulnerable. 
I think you can run this vulnerable build at Nightmare 70 and below, and it, it does give you more uptime. However, I encourage you to get better at, main, at, at alternating between your Iron Golem and Corpse Tendril. If you I, if your Corpse Tendril and they pull in, and you wait a second and a half, and then you tell your Golem to attack, as the Corpse Tendril vulnerable is ending, you'll apply a new vulnerable. You wait a couple, you wait like a second and a half, you Corpse Tendril, as the vulnerable from your Golem is ending, Corpse Tendril applies. And if you get into that rhythm and you practice it, you do not need the extra vulnerable. The reason I like having extra essence in this build is again, when we're in high nightmare and everything is terrifying and one-shotting, I want to be able to be spamming Blight so that I can constantly be stacking up Disobedience. If I can spam Blight, 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 buff all my minions, Blight, 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 buff all my minions, it means that when we're in low density, I can still stack up Disobedience, gives me that big fat armor, keeps me alive, keeps me from dying. So I think that yes, if you if you run with Skeletal Mages, Without the vulnerable, you'll have gaps where there's no vulnerable until you get better at alternating Corpse Tendril and Golem. But I think this is better for having high defense from Disobedience. But both would work fine uh, if you're doing lower nightmare or just open world activities. You can do the vulnerable and it'll be a little bit easier. You don't have to be as as min maxed on, on on managing your vulnerable. Then we're gonna get Golem so we can apply vulnerable here. He also has some nice AOE attacks and damage that comes from that. Pretty cool, uh, but that's just kind of we, we get that extra vulnerable there. Okay, let's talk stats and legendaries here. This is a non Mendel build, and so we are taking full advantage of all the offenses. And before anyone asks, yes, I've tried. I've tried so many different variants of this. This build sucked so hard when I first started working on it. I couldn't even push past Nightmare 50, and it took a lot of experimentation of moving legendaries around, wasting tons of gold, wasting tons of aspects. So I, yes, I did try Viscous on Amulet for the extra mage. I tried Bloodgetters on the Amulet for Extra Warrior. I tried Unyielding Commander on the Two-Hander. I tried it on the Gloves. I tried it on the Rings. I tried Frenzy Dead on the Amulet. I tried Frenzy Dead on the on the, the, the main weapon. I've tried Two-Hand Offhand. I've tried Wand and Focus. I've tried Inner Calm. I've tried Frost Burn. I've tried Deathless uh, uh, or Bloodless Scream. I've tried basically everything that I could try to get this to work. Aside from Shadow, which I'll make a separate build. I think there's a Shadow Minion build that we'll make separately because that plays very differently. And this, I think, is the best iteration of this. What is cool about this is Unyielding Commander, when you put it on your amulet, it does scale the damage reduction as well. This doesn't happen very often in Diablo 4, where the orange number will scale. But in the case of Army of the Dead, because you're putting it on a dual defense offensive slot in amulet, you'll get more. So not only are we getting 150% attack speed during Army of the Dead, for all minions, which includes your golem, we're also getting 135% reduced damage for them as well. So if we maintain high uptime on our Army of the Dead, we can get insane damage reduction and attack speed from them. So that's what you want to look for for that. So I would put Arm Unyielding Commander on the Amulet, and then put Viscous and Bloodgetters on the Boots and the Helm, because we want to keep our, our gloves open for swapping things. Holdbringer is the Blizzard option for the gloves. I found this to be pretty weak in scaling, but it's nice because it applies chill which helps you keep control of the mobs. And also when you can get a large group of enemies together and Coldbringer is stacking up to five in that tightly back packed dense uh, area, you can actually get good damage out of it. If you think about it, um, five blizzards will tick for about 20 to 30 K damage because they stack up on one tar on in one place. If you have 15 to 20 enemies in one spot, you can actually get a good 300,000 to 600,000 damage a second from Coldbringer. If it's one mob, the damage is pretty pitiful, but if you get a good uh, cluster, it does give good value and it does allow us to freeze, which can save your life in a lot of cases. For chess, we want protector for the barrier. Since we can't run might, we don't have a, ba a basic. We run disobedience on pants for the damage reduction. And then for rings, we run frenzy dead for the attack speed and then inner calm for the ring. This build uses inner calm. You stand still, you get uh, up to 30% damage. Your minions get all of it. So vulnerable damage, minions get all of it. Inner calm, minions get all of it. So those are your two best scalers. Summoning skill damage, minions get all of it. Hellbent commander, minions get all of it. So we're trying to maximize all the damage that they get in full rather than maximize the damage they get 30% of to make sure that they scale really well into end game. We want cooldown reduction. We want summoning skill damage. You can see on the amulet and the chest, we have summoning skill damage. Minions get all of this and it affects army of the dead, which is pretty cool. We also want cooldown reduction so we can have high uptime on our abilities. We want near perfect uptime on Army of the Dead. 
you should at a density above five or six enemies in a group you should be able to get full uptime on army of the dead 100 percent of the time if you're managing your decrepify and triggering your lucky hits properly we want damage reduction damage reduction close if you've been watching my videos you know i've been running damage reduction distant as well on chest pants and sometimes amulet the reason i do this is because past nightmare 80 corpse bows one shot you the uh the porcupines in the wildlife areas one shot you the crossbowmen one shot you and so you need some damage reduction distant to make sure that you it takes that one shot and turns into a two shot so you have a chance to react and heal and set up and and that sort of thing it's really uh just to avoid those plus the the wrathful um ghosts the archer ghosts that shoot the giant lightning strike um that can also negative one shot you it does ridiculous damage uh we also want lucky hit to trigger bonuses we want um you'll notice that on the legs and the boots we have dodge chance dodge chance uh, flat on pants and boots. You can also do dodge chance close on pants and dodge chance distant on boots. The reason we run this is because not only is it actually a pretty good defensive stat, but also if you dodge an attack, it will not remove your Kalan's Edict. You'll get that 30% attack speed for your minions, so it helps when you're positioning to avoid some of that. We also want uh, vulnerable damage on rings and on our weapon. You'll note that my, my gear is actually not that well optimized. I don't even have I have like vulnerable damage just now added here. My second ring doesn't even have vulnerable damage on it. One of these isn't even fully upgraded because I ran out of gold. Like there's just so many optimizations in here. I don't have Hellbent Commander on my amulet. Like it, it gets expensive to optimize, but you can see that even improperly optimized, I can still clear high content with this stuff, which is pretty cool. So that's their option there. And then um, those are the stats that you want. For your main weapon, we want two-hand scythe because it has the highest base damage to give our minions. Vulnerable damage, slow damage, close damage, distant damage, crowd control damage. All of these scale really well with our minions and give us bonus on top of that as well. For gems, sapphires and topazes are going to be your best. Sapphire is a little bit better because you don't get CC'd all as much since you're standing in the back. Um, the sapphire means that we get damage reduction while fortified. Emerald or diamond can go in your weapon. Emerald gives you crit damage vulnerable. Diamond will give you uh, ultimate damage. There's not a whole lot of good value in the weapon gems since your minions don't see all of it anyways. Uh, and then for your amulet rings, you want skull for armor. Best elixirs here are just ways for you to survive. Max life, armor, lucky hit chance, if you can find the combatant fortune elixirs from Helltide or Nightmare Dungeons. For incense, we want survivability, max life, armor, resistance. And bad sigil affixes are going to be blood blister because it's hard to get your minions to focus it. If a blood blister spawns in a giant pack of enemies, Good luck trying to get your minions to focus fire it, and on High Nightmare, that Blood Blister will one-shot you, whether you like it or not. And then any elemental damage is a death sentence for minions. It's very hard to keep them alive doing it. So uh, lightning damage, cold damage, um, fire damage, burning damage, any of those. And then cold enchanted, poison enchanted. No matter what you do, it's it's almost impossible to keep your minions alive through, the, uh, through magic damage. It just is. Alternate gearing options down in the bottom right. You can see that Hardened Bones is, is useful. Ring of Mendelm, you can swap in for Inner Calm if you get it. And it's about the same, if not slightly better, um, because you don't have to stand still for Inner Calm. But if you do get Ring of Mendelm, you can put it in the build and it still works. You won't proc it as much as my Dark Emperor build, but you will still proc it regularly uh, and get some bonus damage out of it, which is nice. And you can also run Protecting for the Immunity Bubble. If you're going to be pushing High Nightmare, again, swap to a one-handed Scythe and a Shield. Put hardened bones on the shield, and then you can consider swapping out the golem for blood mist, so you can avoid uh, the impossible situations that happen in High Nightmare. Now let's talk about Paragon, uh, just to get this set up here. This build, um, when you're making Paragon builds, you want to figure out if it's going to be a four glyph, a five glyph, or a six glyph, depending on how valuable the boards are for your class. In this, because we're focusing on minion damage, there's less board value and more glyph value that we can get. So we are going to run a six glyph setup, uh, which is spread pretty thin across all of these. We spend all, most of our points in cult leader, and then we spend the rest of our points going around picking up glyphs because that's where most of our value is going to be. We want to pick up the warrior glyph, which gives skeletal warrior armor and damage. You can see uh, even at level 15, this one gives 123% skeletal warrior damage and armor. We also want dead razor. Dead razor has to go in the cult leader board it is the only board that has the damage reduction for minions on it. And so when we have Dead Razor that raises the value of those in range, we get extra damage reduction and extra minion damage from this. So you want Dead Razor on your 
uh, your cult leader board. It's also the first board that you should attach to your starter board because it gives you the most value. We're going to cut, cut over to the left here to pick up the Flesh Eater node on the Flesh Eater board. This gives 40% increased damage after you consume exactly five corpses. And this benefit goes to your minions as well. And so you want to maintain this buff, consume five corpses, the buff will show up. When it's about to end, you can't refresh it. It has to end. Then you need to consume five more corpses. You get the buff. Super cool. It turns out that Flesh Eater is also the best spot for intelligence as well because the Flesh Eater node uh, glyph has actually 13 nodes of intelligence. It is the most of any board out of all of the Necromancer boards. And so that's where we put the Mage Glyph, which gives us 158% skeletal mage damage and resistance to elements, which doesn't do a whole lot, but it's free, so we take it. Uh, we're going to come over here to the right to go into Blood Begets Blood. The reason we do this is because this is a good willpower board, and we want to use this for Scourge. This gives you and your minions 10% X increased damage to enemies affected by shadow damage over time, your Blight, so you'll be able to get bonus damage 10% for your minions, plus the damage we have from Dead Razor, plus the damage we have from Warrior, plus the damage we have from Mage. And we're going to cut up here into Bloodbath. Bloodbath is a great board on Necromancer for Dexterity, and so it is actually... Uh, tied for this, the, the highest dexterity density on the boards for Necromancer. This gives us vulnerable damage, and we know that minions get 100% of our vulnerable damage. So we come up here and we pick up as much of the uh, dexterity as we can and give us a bunch of vulnerable damage from that. And then we're going to move up here into Scent of Death from Cult Leader. This gives us the 15% damage reduction when we're standing near corpses. The most important part of this is just the damage reduction. And then we're going to come up and we're going to pick up Amplify. This gives us 10% X increased damage for your minions when they are cursed. They're always going to be cursed with Decrepify, so it's another 10% bonus. We give 30% bonus here, we give 10% there, we have 10% there. Those are X multipliers. We have more damage here, more damage there, more damage there. You can see that all of this is here. I found that the Golem doesn't deal a lot of damage even when you put a ton of points into him. He's really just here for the vulnerable, extra tankiness, and also to proc the third bonus from Cult Leader, Legendary Node, which says that minions deal 15% X damage for each type that you have, uh, Warrior, Mage, and Golem. When we have a Golem, our Mages and Warriors do 15% more damage, and they are the bulk of the damage that we're dealing in this build. Now let's talk about gameplay tips and tricks, things that I learned about this build. First of all, it has Inner Calm in it, so you want to be careful about how you use it. So let's talk about Inner Calm and what this actually does for your build. With Inner Calm, when you stand still for up to three seconds, you get 30% damage, your minions see all of this damage. So you want to find ways where you can stand still and chill. The best way I found to do this if you're on PC is to hold the shift key. When you're holding the shift key, your character won't move. No matter what you do, it will always just do attacks, no movement. So you hold shift, you summon uh, minions, you buff, you debuff, you heal, find a safe spot to stand and do it. And as that stacks up, your minions will start doing more and more damage. However, you really have to be careful, especially on High Nightmare, because you, there might be a giant snake charging forward, a boar charging forward, a melee explosion, a ranged attack. So you have to watch the enemy minions. And that's why this build, I think, is the truest summoner build on the internet right now, because it actually is just middle managing your minions. Position yourself properly, stand still for max benefit, give them all Hellbent Commander, maintain all your buffs and bonuses, and then watch the field, watch for dangers, watch for things that you can avoid, things that you can dodge. You're not really attacking the minions apart from just throwing out Blight to stack your disobedience and deal damage with it that way. So make sure you find those safe spots, hold shift, keep those bonuses going so you can have high uptime on Inner Calm. Keep in mind that with Inner Calm, if you dash, it will reset. If you move for any reason, it will fully reset. You cannot, it doesn't like degra degradate from the top. It goes all the way up to the top. If you move for any reason, it resets to zero and you have to stack it back up again. When it comes to Suppressor, there is a bug right now where Ring of Mendelm doesn't proc in Suppressor. Very annoying, but for this build, since we're not using it, we don't really care. So with Suppressor, what I found is you can run uh, a couple feet past the other side of the Suppressor then immediately start walking back. If you get a screen distance away from your mages, they will stop what they're doing and start following you. So run a couple steps past the Suppressor, turn around and come back and they should be just entering the suppressor as you enter it. Obviously, this is more annoying if you're up against a, a, a mob that moves with suppressor, but in general, you should be fine. When you're standing for placement, you want to find a spot where you can set up for inner calm, where you have the reapers and the golem preferably in front of you, and you have the mages surrounding you 
for any projectile attacks. You also want to utilize terrain as much as you possibly can. So you can see here, when we, we went in, there's an aura in here, and there's a bunch, and this is Witchwater 72, very scary. We come in and we find a spot back here, because then I can be within range for Hellbent Commander on the minions that are standing here, but I can also be at a distance where I can see the snakes coming and I can stand away. I post up, I get the intercom going, I see that there's problems, and then you can very easily use the corners of the map and the doors and distances to keep yourself safe. You can also actually just stand behind a wall, so you can come out, leave the doorway, stand behind the wall. Your minions are doing all your damage, so just make sure you buff. You can target the corpses through the wall as well, stand away, and then when it's time and safe, you can come in and get the buff there. But your positioning is paramount for your survival, your ability to kill mobs and get through all of the progress that's in front of you. If you're not paying attention and standing in the right spot, it can really, really hurt you. Here's another example of positioning here. We're on mine work, Ben and Mine Work 78, and we see that we have some mobs coming up on the side here. You'll see that when the mobs start coming in from this top side, I immediately come and I stand behind the highest density of mages that I can. So that way, if there's a projectile that comes out, a web or some kind of poison or something from the spiders, uh, it hits the mages first and I'm always healing them. So that's kind of like my main focus. So we kind of keep pick that up there. Then we move forward, we get some decrepifies in, we see we're taking damage. And then when I move up, you'll notice that instead of saying like, so this is the gates of Thermopylae here and the Persian soldiers are coming through, you'll notice that I left the safety of my mages and I went straight to the wall. I'm standing on the wall here so that if any enemies attack with a line attack, guess what? It goes past me. I'm in this safe spot here that I use the walls, I use the terrain, I use my minions to stand in my way. And then once I do that, then I can post up for inner calm. I can start getting my buffs. I can start tanking and healing, doing all that kind of bonus. I have to step forward. You'll notice when, when I step forward here, um, you'll notice there's like, there's a Reaper here and a Reaper here and my golem's on the far side, which is unfortunate. So if I have a dead zone here with no minions in front of me, I leave the wall and I go all the way over so that the Reapers are protecting me from projectiles. You want to be constantly doing this when you're playing so that no matter what, you always have minions between you and the scary things. And then you stand still, put all the buffs up, let your minions go. You can see that these this is a level 78 dungeon, pure minion damage. These guys have a defensive aura up and they're still getting absolutely shredded by the minions. Again, you saw there when uh, when a, spo a spoder broke free and I'm in danger. See, it kind of steps forward. I, I st Spider comes straight for me. What's the first thing that I do? Instead of maintaining my buff, I stand right behind my mages. I use those as my barricade. You are the middle manager. You're running around. You're hiding. You're positioning. And your positioning is directly equal to your ability to survive in difficult content. But if you can give your minions Hellbent Commander, give them Inner Calm, they will do all the work for you. If you have a particularly dangerous room, keep in mind you can tell your golem to go in first. So use your golem attack. Even if he misses, just send him straight into the room. He'll go in first and start uh, taking damage from projectiles, and then you can follow in and follow in with him. The other thing that you want to note is while you're rotating your Corpse Tendril and your uh, Iron Golem for vulnerable, keep in mind if there's a high density of mobs in here, you don't actually want to put the Golem uh, Slam in the middle of the pack, because sometimes he won't get pathing, and he'll, he'll just run around and won't be able to use it. So I've learned to use the Corpse Tendril to bring them all in. When the vulnerable is ending, Tell your golem to slam on the edge of the dense pack, somewhere around the edge here, because it's very large area. You'll be able to get all the mobs inside, and this way he'll be able to get to, he'll be able to path to it and deal damage. So usually I'll just see see where he is, like where he's standing right now, and then I'll try to find a spot on the edge of the pack where I can tell him the pathing there is very important because if again if you put it in the middle of the mobs that are, all have collision, he won't be able to get to that spot and he won't proc the vulnerable you won't have the damage. So you want to tell him to slam on the very edge of it so that you can at least get that that uh, effect to proc. The number one threat to your minions is going to be elemental damage and the king or queen of this is going to be fire enchanted. It is the only reason I can't push any higher and hopefully with buffs for the minions it makes it a lot easier to play. But in general if I run into fire enchanted my minions are just going to start falling over. They just can't deal with that kind of passive AoE damage and you can't tell them not to stand in it or you can't tell them to avoid the projectiles, so they just die. So you want to find dungeons that have less fire enchanted in it. It's very dangerous for them. Poison enchant is a bad one too. Plague bringer is another one too. Any of those like AOE elemental effects on the ground, they're just going to get owned by. 
uh, and makes it very hard to progress because they die. Listen, I've given them as much damage reduction as I can. That, that problem still persists. So if we get a, a, a AoE damage reduction buff for minions where they take like 90% damage reduction from AoE effects, this build becomes even stronger. And of course, you can run uh, Mendel in this build as well. So be wary of elemental damage. Be wary of fire enchanted. If you see fire enchanted, pull back, try to isolate that elite, kill them by themselves. Summon your minions. You need to be on full uptime of using Ray Skeleton to keep them alive. And then once the fire enchant is gone, then you can go about your business playing normally. But it is by far the most threatening affix to deal with with minions because they just melt like butter in front of it. And that is the Undead Lord Necromancer. If you build it like I have, you should be able to push endgame with this build doing all minion damage. It took a lot of testing and a lot of effort to get it to this point, but I'm happy to say that for the summoner mains out there that just want minions, it is possible. You just have to get all the pieces aligned in just the right spot and you can actually do it. So if you found value in the video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm so this video gets seen by more people and I will see you on my live stream. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content, link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.